Hey stars, it's me, Sheree McKee Music, and welcome back to the channel. I hope you can hear me. This is another rooftop moment. Um, this is a story time, and uh, yeah, I hope the audio is good. But um, I was reluctant to tell the story because it's very personal, and um, only like my BFF knows, and um, my sisters, so and my mom, she knows too. But um, yeah, because I'm sort of like a private person. I don't, I don't like to share when I'm going through stuff too much. But uh, yeah, I I was like, you know what? This happened years ago, so there's no need in like hiding it or keeping it in. Just, just share it on your YouTube channel. So that's what I'm doing. A situation where I was engaged, and um, I actually found out that my fiance was living a whole nother life with another woman, with two sons, basically a whole nother family. It was really, really crazy. So if you're interested in hearing this story time, stay tuned. At a time when I was engaged, I was engaged to my fiance, and we we really loved each other. I really loved him, and I'm sure he really loved me. Um, he, he definitely showed it, I should say. And, um, <clears throat> Unfortunately, before we got married, I found out that he basically had a wife, he had children, basically he had a whole nother life, a whole nother family in the Caribbean. <laughs> and I was totally clueless to it. This particular summer, I spent the entire summer in Martha's Vineyard. Um, if you guys don't know where Martha's Vineyard, I'm sure most of you do know, but um, yeah, Martha's Vineyard is a, a very, very, like, relaxing, cool island. And people go there basically, well, people live there, but people go there to vacation in the summer. And it's really, really nice. I don't want this to be a long video, but I met him one summer in Martha's Vineyard. And that's how we became um, friends. And um, he became my man. I was his girl. So we would speak on the phone. So after I left the vineyard, I would go back to... Pennsylvania or I think I was going living in New York at the time I would go back to New York and he went back to the Caribbean so we kept a relationship you know we he was my man and I was his girl it's a wonderful wonderful guy and on the vineyard like when we met and we fell in love we did so much together we used to go to parties we used to go out to dinner um, but eventually we got so close that we moved in together at least for the summer so he was accustomed to going to the vineyard more often than I was because he basically grew up on the vineyard like going there every summer as a youngster me I started going to the vineyard like as an adult so this is where things got a little complex one summer he was like okay you coming to the venue for the summer I was like yeah he was like well, I'm he would always get to the venue earlier than me because he actually worked there like he had been working at this particular place for like many many years we met up in the vineyard of course and um he always rented a house which was beautiful oh my god beautiful right on the beach so one summer um when I came to the vineyard he told me you know what um he finally admitted to me that he had two sons. Said, to me, it was no big deal because most heterosexual men, at least nowadays, you know, they they do have children. They do have baby mamas. And I asked him, I said, well, how come you never admitted that to me? He said, well, I didn't want to tell you too soon because I didn't want to scare you away. And I was like, no, you wouldn't scare me away, not at all. You know, it's because, like, I loved him. So it's like, I'm going to accept him the way he is. And I mean, if he has children, that you know he love. I'm I'm gonna accept them too. I mean I'm I'm grown. So he invited his sons up to come stay with us, right? So they came up and they stayed with us in in the house that we rented. Nice looking kids too. Really nice looking. They were teenagers. I think one was like 17 and the other one was like 14 or 15. And so um. One of them was like really, really nice to me. He was like the sweetest kid. That was the one that was like 14. But the other one that was like 17, he was very standoffish. And it was like something that I saw in his eyes that I could tell like he did not like me. Like from the moment he met me, I could tell like he was not feeling me at all. <laughs> I hadn't 
done anything to him, of course. But I was like, okay, you know what? That's probably normal. You know, he's meeting his his father's girlfriend or fiance, whatever you want to call it. But we were we were engaged. So I said, okay, well maybe he just has has to like warm up to me. So I kept an open mind. I was always nice to him, always kind. So one day, him and his father were arguing. And um, and I said, you know, guys, why don't you try to just like talk it out? And so he looks at me and he goes, you know what? You need to mind your business. You've got nothing to do with it. I mean, he had like all this rain. So I just like stepped back, you know, and I noticed his father didn't say too much. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I overstepped my boundary. But I was just trying to be a peacemaker. I just went back to my room. And then um, all of a sudden I overheard him arguing about me. He was like, well, you know, you bring this woman into my house and, you know, and mom is home struggling and this and that. And I was like, whoa, whoa. So my ears were like glued to the door because I'm like, okay, what is going on? Like, is there something that I don't know? So his father was like, your mother and I aren't together. He was like, well, you, you, you live with us. What you mean we're not together? And then you bring us down here and you introduce us to this bitch. He called me a bitch. <laughs> and I was like, okay. I didn't take it personal because I knew that I had never done anything to him for him to dislike me or to call me a bitch. So I knew it was like coming from somewhere else. It had really nothing to do with me. It was with his father and his mother situation. So... About an hour later, my fiance comes up into the room. He said, you're okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm okay. I was like, are you okay? He was like, yeah. I was like, um, so did you and your son work everything out? He was like, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, everything everything is cool. He was like, I'm going out for a minute. I'll be back. I was like, okay. So he left. I guess he went to like visit a friend or, or maybe just to get some fresh air and just to like clear his mind. So I went to the kitchen. And I'm making myself some tea, and then his son, the 17-year-old one, comes down in the kitchen. He looks at me, and he rolls his eyes, and um, I just continue making my tea, and I said, okay, I'm going to be the mature one. And I say to him, I said, excuse me, you know what, um, I'm sorry for interfering in, um, you know, the argument that you and your dad were having. Um, I really apologize that. Oh, I really apologize for that. And you're right, it was really none of my business. I was just wanted to try to be the peacemaker. He was like, you're not the effing peacemaker, bitch. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, you know what? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I realize you're still upset, so I'm just going to let this go. And he was like, you know what? Do you know my dad is stupid with, his, with my mom? I said, excuse me? He says, yes, my dad is still with my mom. I said, well, that's not what he told me. He said, yeah, they're still together. He says, well, he's not here on the vineyard. He lives with us. I said, really? He said, yeah. And I looked in his eyes and I could tell he was like, like he wanted to smile. Like he, he felt some kind of like um, relief, a, a joy out of like, hurting me because I know he saw in my eyes like it was like a stab in my heart I was like oh so but I tried to hide it but it was it was difficult and I just said oh okay I said well thank you for telling me that so I made my tea I was like numb guys I was like a zombie so I continued making my tea and I just walked past him and I went upstairs to my room so I was just trying to put everything together. I was like, okay, did he say that to hurt me? Or is that the truth? Uh, I was like, okay, if that's the truth, it makes sense why he hates me so much from the moment he met me. And like his dad must be imposing me on him because he has to keep it a secret. So it's like everything started to come together Maybe he's lying. I'm thinking, well, maybe he's lying just to like get me out of his dad's life because he hates my guts. I didn't know what to think. So his dad didn't come in until about one in the morning. So I waited up, checked his identity. I'll just call him um, 
Miles. Yeah. So Miles. Yeah. So Miles says, um, well, I say to Miles, I said, Miles, um, I had a conversation with your son, and I don't know how to say this, but he told me that you're married back in the islands, and that you live with your wife and him and your other son and that you guys are basically a family. He goes, my son told you that? I said, yes, he did. And then he didn't say anything. He just like looked at me. And then at that moment, that's when I knew, I was like, oh my God, it's true. And so he said, you know what? This situation is very complicated. You don't understand. I said, wait a minute complicated I don't understand I say why don't you try me why don't you try explaining the truth to me there is a possibility I will understand he goes well you know we do live together but we're not together I say so you you live with the woman who's who's basically your wife but you're telling me that you're not together but you live together with your children and her he goes well, yeah, we, we, we live in the same house, but we're, we're not in a relationship. I said, well, why didn't you tell me this? When were you going to tell me this? He goes, well, you know, because I'm saving my money, so you and I, after we get married, we can get our own place. I said, what? I said, are you, are you kidding me? I said, all this time you've been living with another woman? Basically, well, not even another woman, your wife? and your children, and you never disclose this information to me? He goes, well, we, we're not together. I said, you know what? Now I see why your son hates my guts. Because he thinks that I knew this, but I didn't know that. And so I, he probably thinks I'm just like some woman that's accepting this. I'm like some side chick or something. You know, I was like, you know what? You really put me in a really weird and uncomfortable situation. And it's like, you know what I said I need some time to think about this because you know what me just finding out this information I'm sorry I love you but I can't trust you and once trust is gone from a relationship I mean that's basically it I mean yes you can forgive and forget but it's like if his son never said that to me when was he going to tell me and I said this to him I said when were you going to tell me huh when it's complicated that doesn't make sense. I said, let's say if the, if, the, if the tables were turned and I was living with some guy or I was living with my, my husband or my ex, whatever you want to call him, and I never told you that, how would you feel? It was crazy. So to make a long story short, we basically broke up. No, like, no bitterness or no... Uh, no grudges. I, I, don't, I don't hold on to stuff like that because I know it weighs your spirit down. So I basically have healed from that. But um, I will admit that um, it took me a while to really heal from that because like, I really care for this person and I trusted him because he, he never gave me any reason not to trust him. Now, like I don't rush into relationships now and, uh, and I've been in long-term relationships since that incident. But um, it takes me a little longer before I let all of my guards down, to be honest with you, because of that incident. So I hope you guys found my story um, interesting. I hope you can learn something from it. <laughs> um, if you have any questions or concerns, just leave your comments below. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, so uh, that's my story time video. And um, the sun is actually about to go down, so it's perfect timing. And I see that my battery is starting to die. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.